100. Welcome to our third introduction of InDesign slash recap video. In this video we're going to be going over how to insert images. So in the first video it went over how to open up a new file. In our second video we quickly went over how to insert some basic text. This is like the remnants of what you're seeing. And now in this video we're going to go over how to pull in graphics. Um, I have created two new spreads. So you'll see here I've got placing, oops, placing the image directly without making a frame first. And there's going to be one other example too. So before you get started on this part of the lecture, there's um, a couple things that I want you to do. So if you need to pause after this, please go ahead and pause. When I um, talked to the class on uh, sorry, last week, I said to everybody that I wanted you guys to essentially have all of your images picked out before you start working on this document. And what I mean by images, it could be your color palettes, it could be the actual logos that you've worked on, but any sort of image that you'll be placing, I want you to have those picked out first. And not only do I want you to have them picked out, but I'm going to hop in my finder here. Um, earlier, I made a 2700 folder. I saved this file, example 01, in there. And what I've done now is I've made a new folder called JPEGs. And everything that I want to pull into this document is located in that JPEGs folder. So make sure that before you do this next part, you have all of your images gathered in one location that you can easily pull from. In a nutshell, um, InDesign works like AutoCAD it x-references all of its images. So it's not like it's actually physically putting them in there, but it's going to reference back to this folder. So we will do more exercises on how this works, but for now, I just need you to remember that your images should all be in one location, that you know where it is, and then don't move this from this location. So the worst thing that you could do is go online, download a whole bunch of images, pull them from your downloads folder and then you know a week from now go and clean out your downloads folder forget they were in there because then you've lost your images so it's really important that you be organized in this sense so I have two examples I'm going to use one of them is a JPEG and one of them is a PSD but really you can pull in any sort of file into InDesign including PDFs and it's really similar to the way a PDF, or I'm sorry, a PSD works. So I'm going to show you that as well. That's one of InDesign's greatest strengths is that it works pretty seamlessly with Photoshop. So if you use Photoshop quite a bit, or even Illustrator, the two of them will speak together really nicely. So just like our text frame, um, images also live within a frame. So I'm going to ask you to think about it for a few seconds. You might even hit pause. But what is the shortcut to create a new frame? And I hope you immediately thought F for frame. You can see that my cursor changed. Now remember, our default cursor is V. It looks like this. And that you can get there by hitting V, and sometimes you can get there by hitting escape. But for now, we want F for frame. And just like um, our uh, text example, you can either click and drag, you know, kind of freehand it, or if you just click, you can actually put in the dimensions right on the screen. Now for this first example, I'm actually going to go back into selection mode because on this screen right here, I put placing the image directly without making a frame first. Okay, so that's not where I want to show this example. Let me go down to this page here, page 7, and this is placing the image into a frame you've already created. Okay, so this is where I want to show this example. So F for frame, I'm going to click on my screen and make a 4x4 four four frame just like that. I'm going to hit V to go back into selection and I'm going to move and center this. There we go, and as soon as I see those guidelines pop up, I will know that that is centered. So in order for this to work, you actually have to click on the frame, and that way InDesign will know that this is the frame you want to pull an image into. 
So to place an image now, the shortcut for this is Control or Command D, and it actually stands for place. I don't know how they got Control D for it. I always think duh, but Command D, and what it's going to do now is it's going to take you into your browser or your explorer. It's going to ask you, okay, take me to the location where these images are. So remember, before I started this lecture, or before you start your assignment, make sure you have everything pulled in. So for this particular example, I'm just going to hit Photoshop Example 2, okay, JPEG, and I'm going to click on Open. And what it's going to do is it's going to put that image into that frame. Okay. Now, if, um, if I show you what it looks like, you can see even by this little tiny thumbnail that I'm going to put side by side that there's obviously some stuff being cut off here, right? So it did its best trying to fit the picture within this frame. I skipped ahead a little bit. If you notice, if you hover over a image, an image frame, you'll see this little circle pop up. And when you put your hand close to the circle, you'll see a new frame pop up, okay? So what it's showing you, this blue outline is your frame, and this kind of brown golden outline is the actual outline of how the image fits. So what we can do now, you can see that when I have this selected, we have these new icons pop up. And these are new icons that, depending on when you took my class, you may or may not have seen these icons. But what we want to do is play with these. So we can either fill the frame proportionately, so you can see what it does is it takes the image and it fills it the best it can within this frame. Um, I can even take this and kind of move the image down a little bit, okay, get it to fit a little bit better. Now the logo is not being cut off so much. And I should say for now, Ignore the fact that it looks really pixelated. We'll go into that in just a bit. So that's what um, fill frame proportionately looks like. Our next one is fit content proportionately. So if I click on that, you'll notice that it scales the image to fit perfectly within that frame. Okay. So now my image isn't being cut off, but I've got some empty space at the top and bottom of my frame. So my frame doesn't quite fit perfectly right now. Um, what you can do in this instance is there is another button right here. Uh, let me find it. Fit frame to content. So what this is going to do when I click on it is it took that frame and it fit around this image perfectly. Okay, So you can kind of play with those and depending on the image that you're working on, it might not matter if it gets cut off a little bit, so I'm going to do Control Z until we're back to our square, right? So I think it's okay if I'm if I've lost some information here, but if this was like a Revit floor plan that you wanted to show in your portfolio, you probably don't want that to be cut off, or even like an image of a board. So depending on the content you're working with, it might not make sense um, to do fill frame proportionately you might have to fit the content so that you don't lose anything, okay? And these are these buttons right here you can just kind of play around with um, as you pull in your content. One other thing that you can do is, let's say that you wanted to focus on a particular item. So in this case, I want to focus on me. What you can do is you can click on the image again, okay, not the frame, but you can activate the image, and I can come here, and when I hold the shift down, the shift key down, it'll do it proportionately. But I can actually go through and kind of move this around to see what I want. Okay. So it's interesting, you are moving an image within a frame. So those two things can move independently of one another. So for example, when I click off, I can click on the frame and move the frame. Okay, and the image moves with it. I'm going to move it back into the place where it's centered. But if I come and I click on the actual image itself, not the frame, I can move my image within the frame. 
So this will just take some practice. Remember, anytime you can hit pause and start pulling in, the best thing about YouTube is you can hit pause, you can rewind, fast forward, play it faster, whatever works for you. Okay? Now, the thing to remember is that we place this image into a frame that we already created. We use the F for frame tool. Remember, you can click and drag, or you can click right on the screen and specify the exact size. And the shortcut to pull in the image was Control D to get that image into place. Okay. Now, the other scenario I wanted to show you is what would happen. Actually, let me back up just a little bit. Um, right now, it looks like my image is terribly pixelated. Now, if you haven't taken this class before, you might be freaking out like, oh, why are my images so awful? What InDesign does is as you are working, it actually reduces the um, display performance so that it's a little bit easier on your graphic card. So what I did, click anywhere on your screen, not on an item, but anywhere on your screen, go down to display performance and do high quality display. That, what that'll do is it'll change your images so that now you can see them in high quality. So you can see my nice smiling face a little bit better. By default, it is set to typical display. Again, this makes your graphic card work a little bit faster because it's not um, showing you all of these high resolution images. As we get working on our portfolio, you're gonna have a lot more images. So it's nice for your computer, at least your graphic card, to take a little bit of a break. You'll notice it working a little bit faster on typical display, okay? So again, that's a right click, display performance, high quality display. So now I'm gonna go back to this page here, page five, placing the image directly without making a frame first. I prefer not to do it this way because when I hit Command D or Control D right now, and I pull in that exact same image, here's my JPEG, when I click on open, what ends up happening is it brings it in full size. So the exact same size pixels that it was, it brings it in. So this image really isn't that bad, but if you were to pull off any images like off of your iPhone that you may have had, they come in really big. Even some of your Reddit, Revit PDFs would come in really large too. So again, this one wasn't so bad, it at least fit. Let me see really quick if I can pull something in from my downloads. This is where I have so much stuff. Oh my goodness, you guys will not believe. Um, let's see, those look like they're small images. Let me look for another image. I think some of these all look pretty. You know, this one might work. So if I just open this one directly right here, See, this little plant frame came in huge, okay? So I like to have a frame first because I'm gonna go ahead and delete this, and I'm gonna delete this one as well. If I have a frame first and I hit Control D, I'm gonna go find that, um, that image again that I just pulled in. I think it's this one right here. So at least if I have a frame, it can contain it. And again, I can come up here to these buttons and I can play with the fitting of it. The two things that I would avoid, do not, um, where are they? Oh, I think they're gone now. They used to do things disproportionately and it drew, drove me insane. But it looks like now everything here is in proportion. So I don't even have to talk about that. Is it this one? No. Okay, sorry. Um, it's getting a little bit late for me, but those are the techniques that I want you to use to pull in your images. So again, it's best to draw your frame first and then use Command or Control D to pull it in. And then from there, you can either um, click on the image itself and make the image larger within the frame. Let's say I just want to show the uh, the leaves and not the vase. So you can see that I can kind of cut that off of view 
And then I can even come and toggle my frame to go around the leaves as well. All right. So again, these are just really quick examples to hopefully get you guys refreshed and started again. We'll do some more in-depth things, including looking into how to bring in Photoshop files, PSD files, controlling, you know, what page we're pulling in, what layers of the PSD. There's really, um, there's, there's a couple of powerful tools in InDesign that really help with editing your portfolio. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop this lecture. And then I'm going to post one more in this introduction on how to save all of this as a PDF. Thanks again for watching.